Hello and welcome to Edu Sathi's lecture on clocks. Now clocks is a slightly difficult topic, difficult to comprehend and most people actually leave out questions on clocks in an examination. But in this video, I'll tell you very easy ways to solve these questions and I'll give you a few tricks and tips to easily guess the answers. So let's get going. So the first question is what is a clock? I'm sure everybody knows. It's an instrument to indicate, keep and coordinate time. So let's move to the next slide. So the first concept we do today is understanding the structure of a clock. The face or dial of a clock is a circle whose circumference is divided into 60 equal parts. See between 12 and 1 for example I have 5 parts I have 1, 2, 3, 4 and this one 5. So I have 5 parts between 12 and 1 and similarly there are 12 such parts so 5 into 12 makes it 60 equal parts which are also called the minute spaces. So every minute the minute hand which is this hand no sorry this is a second hand minute hand which is this hand will move from this to the next space. So every minute the minute hands move by one space including 12 equal parts which are called the R spaces like 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 these are called the R spaces. So the R hand and the minute hand we are not really concerned with the seconds hand in the uh, clocks questions so this hand is actually out of picture we'll just have a short hand which is the R hand and a longer hand which is the minute hand. Now uh, this slide is uh, slightly important. If you look at the minute hand here, this minute hand moves 360 degrees in 60 minutes because every min hour the minute hands completes one complete round. So it covers 360 degrees in 60 minutes. Okay. So in one minute the minute hand moves how much? 360 divided by 6 or 6 degrees a minute. In one hour it moves 360 degrees. Similarly the R hand, the shorter hand completes 360 degrees in 12 hours. This is something which we all know. So in one hour it covers how much? 360 divided by 12 or just 30 degrees which is what I've mentioned here. So in one hour the minute hand covers 360 degrees whereas the hour hand covers 30 degrees. In one minute the minute hand covers 6 degrees and the hour hand covers just half degree. How did this half come up? We calculated 30 degrees an hour. So an hour has how many minutes? 60 minutes. So in other words the hour hand covers 30 degrees in 60 minutes. So 30 degrees by 60 is the angle covered per minute. So this gives me half a degree per minute. So what is the relative speed here? The relative speed per minute is the minute hand moves by 6 degrees in the clockwise direction obviously and the hour hand also moves in the clockwise direction the same direction. So the relative speed is 6 minus half and this is obviously degrees per minute which gives me 11 by 2 degrees per minute. In case you have problem understanding what is relative speed you need to take up the lecture on time speed and distance in the quantitative ability part. Let's move to the next slide. So the takeaways from this slide is in one minute the minute hand uh, moves 6 degrees and the hour hand moves half degrees and the relative speed is 11 by 2 degrees per minute. So let's move to the second concept here. The first concept was understanding the structure. Now that we've understood the structure, we'll put it into solving questions. So the second concept is finding the angle between the hour hand and the minute hand. For example, 
calculate the angle between the hour hand and the minute hand when the clock reads 10 10 now how to solve these kind of questions now I will assume that let's suppose the minute hand is here exactly at 10 okay so which reads 50 minutes here and then the minute hand moves and comes to this place where there is 2 or 10 minutes so as we've done in the previous slide that per minute the minute hand moves by 6 degrees okay so in 20 minutes from this place 10 till this place 2 the minute hand will move by how many degrees 6 degrees into 20 minutes this is 6 degrees per minute so this minute and minute cancels out or it gives me 120 degrees but this is not the answer as you see here D option is 120 but this is just to confuse you why is this incorrect because in this 10 minutes or in this 20 minutes where the minute hand has moved the hour hand has also moved let me draw another clock here when the clock struck 10 the hour hand was exactly at 10 and the minute hand was exactly at 12 but when the minute hand moves to here to 10 minutes or points towards 2 the hour hand will also slightly move away from 10 so the angle would be not 120 degrees but something less than 120 degrees now it can be 110 it can be 100 or 115 we'll find out here so as we did in the previous slide again the hour hand moves by half a degree per minute right so in 10 minutes when the minute hand moves from 12 to 2 how much will the hour hand move it will move by half degrees into 10 which is 5 degrees so the minute hand covers 120 degrees and the hour hand covers 5 degrees and both of them are covered in the same direction so going by the relative formula relative speed or relative distance I have the answer as 120 degrees minus 5 degrees which is 115 degrees now this is the concept between you know on how to find using this distance covered but there is a very easy formula which I will discuss in the next slide in which you will get this 115 degrees answer straight away so if you are finding difficult to comprehend on how to solving questions like this like assuming the minute and here and then finding out how much the hour hand moves just pay attention on the next slide and just memorize that formula so the formula says that theta the angle between the minute hand and the hour hand is given by this 11 by 2 into m minus 30 h and within this absolute sign so theta is the angle between the two hand m is the minutes and r h is the hours so here i have the time as 10 10 as in the previous question so what is the minutes here it is 10 so my answer would be something like 11 by 2 into 10 minus 30 multiplied by how many hours here 10 hours always these hours will be in the 12 hour format don't put a 24 or 23 hours nothing like that in the 12 hour format so I have minus 30 into 10 and this in the absolute sign so this gives me 55 minus 300 or this is absolute of minus 245 or 245 but in the previous case my answer was 115 now these two angles are actually the same 245 is which angle this angle the reflex angle this is 245 degrees but always whenever you have asked the angle between the hour hand and the minute hand you are always supposed to give the answer which is less than 180 degrees so the right answer in this case would be 360 minus 245 which is nothing but 115 degrees so this formula here always will work and it's a very easy formula so memorize this take note of this formula and 
this concept too of the angle between the hour hand and the minute hand would be you'll be able to calculate this in seconds let's move on so a note here when the two hands are coinciding or overlapping it means that theta is equal to 0 so you can put this theta equal to 0 and let's say you are given uh, at on how many minutes between 11 and 12 does the angle becomes the does the both hands coincide so you can put theta equal to 0 r hand uh, the r equal to 11 because you've asked it between 11 and 12 and then you'll get the in minutes answer after how many minutes do these hands coincide when the two hands are at right angles or perpendicular it means theta is 90 degrees when the two hands are in opposite direction it means theta is 180 degrees so in this formula basically you have just three things you have theta you have the minute and you have the hours so any two of them given to you you can easily find out the third thing but keep in mind this absolute sign so whenever you remove the absolute sign you will have a plus minus here okay so if i if you have to find out like uh, let's say after how many minutes past three will the angle between the hour hand and the minute hand be 90 degrees so you'll put theta is equal to 90 degrees is equal to absolute sign 11 by 2 m you have to find out m minus 30 into 3 so when you remove this absolute sign you will have here plus minus 90 degrees is equal to 11 by 2 m minus 90 we'll do these kind of questions further in the slides but just to give you an idea here this is how you're going to solve so you'll have one equation with plus 90 and another equation with minus 90 and we'll get two values for minutes if both the values come out to be positive or below 60 then it's good because 60 min you cannot exceed 60 minutes otherwise you will just have one single answer let's check the next slide yeah so we move on to the concept number three here the number of times an angle is made now this is very important and generally straight away asked in examinations so what does this mean that theta would be 0 degrees or 180 degrees how many times in 12 hours or theta would be between 0 and 180 degrees how many times in 12 hours so I told you the angle will always be less than 180 degrees we do not consider reflex angles therefore I am considering only till 180 now how this how did this 11 figure come up I'll tell you so uh, let's take the case of 0 degrees 180 degree would be the same so the first time the angle between the hour hand and the minute hand is 0 degrees is at 12 so let's assume at 12 a.m. we are starting the clock and the angle is 0 degrees now after how many minutes will this angle again be 0 degrees if you see the minute hand moves faster than the hour hand so this is the minute hand and this is the hour hand so as it moves faster the minute hand has to cover an entire 360 degrees more than the hour hand to actually coincide with it so what is the distance which the minute hand has to cover it is 360 degrees what is the relative speed as we discussed before it is 11 by 2 degrees per minute so how much time will it take for the minute hand to catch up the hour hand once the angle is zero to make an angle zero again so we can simply apply the formula time is equal to distance by speed the distance is 360 degrees and what is the speed it's 11 by 2 so I have 11 into 2 this gives me 720 by 11 minutes or in other words this is 65 5 by 11 minutes so after every 65 5 by 11 minutes the hour hand and the minute hand will coincide so the first time they coincide is at 12 am then they will coincide at like 1 
or 5 and something because 65 minutes means 60 minutes plus 5 minutes so at, at 1 5 then they'll coincide at 2 10 and similarly at 3 15 mind you this is something greater than 1 5 something greater than 2 10 something greater than 3 15 because I don't have exact 65 minutes I have 65 5 by 11 minutes and if you keep on counting it will go on till 12 p.m. 12 p.m. in the noon so for 12 hours they will if you count the number of times these times they come out to be 11 and not 12 why 11 because they'll meet at 10 55 and then straight at 12 so there is no time between 11 and 12 and the angle between the hour hand and the minute hand is zero so that is why you have 11 times or you can just uh, make a note in your copy 1 5 2 10 and you can count on the times you'll get 11 times so if in 12 hours they coincide 11 times in 24 hours just 11 multiplied by 2 22 times now let's take any angle between 0 degrees and 180 degrees and count the number of times let's take an angle 10 degrees okay so between 12 and 1 when will the angle be 10 degrees so I put 10 degrees is equal to 11 by 2 m minus 3 h since I'm finding between 12 and 1 this h would be 0 so 12 in this formula is represented as 0 and not as 12 remember this so I have plus minus 10 is equal to 11 by 2m so m is either equal to 20 by 11 or minus 20 by 11 this is ruled out because time cannot be negative so m is 20 by 11 past 12 similarly you can calculate for 2 between 2 and 3 3 and 4 and so on and you'll get that 10 degrees occurs 11 times in 12 hours but why have I written 22 here the reason is what is the supplement of 10 degrees it is 360 minus 10 which is 350 now when you calculate for 350 degrees this angle will also come up 11 times in 12 hours but as I mentioned before that we don't mention angles greater than 180 degrees for the angle between the hour hand and the minute hand so 350 degrees is actually represented by 10 degrees because if one angle is 350 obviously the other side has 10 degrees that is why the 10 degree here takes 11 of its own and 11 of the 350 degrees and I have 11 plus 11 22 times here so for 22 hours it doubles 22 into 2 44 so now you remember this matrix here because you may be asked direct questions for example they'll give you the angle as 0 degrees how many times do the hands of a clock coincide in 12 hours simply mark 11 or in 24 hours 22 or if they give you an angle of how many times will 63.5 degrees be formed in a span of 22 hours between the hour hand and the minute hand so straight away mark 44 let's move on this is the conclusion here the two hands of a clock will coincide the first time after 65 5 by 11 minutes that is at 1 5 approximately then at 2 10 then at 3 15 then at 4 20 5 25 and finally at 12 note that the hands of the clock will not meet between 11 and 12 but straight at 12 hence in 12 hours the hands meet only 11 times each angle between 0 and 180 is formed 22 times in 12 hours whereas 0 and 180 are formed only 11 times each okay so let's get to the next slide another thing to note as I've already proved that the two hands of a clock coincide or overlap after 65 5 by 11 minutes the angle considered between the two hands is always the smaller one that is the one which is in between 0 degrees 
and 180 degrees. Let's move to the fourth concept which is the concept of mirror image. Now mirror image is like for example if I have 11, 10 striking at the clock and I put a mirror here what time will be shown here. To find the mirror image of any given time subtract the value from 1160 that is given time plus mirror image time is always equal to 1160. Now why is so? See this clock I have shown the mirror image here this 2 is here and this 2 is here so it's a mirror image but in the actual clock I had 10 here. See this this 10 is here in the actual clock. So if you add 10 plus 2 this gives you 12 hours. Similarly you can count on any of these figures I have 7 plus 5 this is again 12. I have 9 plus 3 this is again 12 hours. So 12 hours is nothing but 11 hours and 60 minutes that is where this figure has come up from. We will take an example so that it is more clear. Find the mirror image of 320 on a wall clock. So I have the given time which is 320. I have to find the mirror image time the MIT I will write it as mirror image time this is equal to 11 hours and 60 minutes. So the mirror image time comes out to be 60 minus 20 is 40 so I have 40 minutes here and 11 minus 3 is 8 so the mirror image time is 840. Similarly find the mirror image time for 11.10 on a wall clock so I have 11.10 plus the mirror image time is equal to 11.60 so it's, it's pretty mechanical now so I have mirror image time is equal to 11.60 minus 11.10 and this comes out to be 0 0.50 so what do you mean by 0 0.50? This is actually nothing but 12.50. This is the answer. 0 is replaced by 12. I hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next concept which is on gain or loss of time. If a clock is correct, then the hands of the clock will coincide every 65 5 by 11 minutes. This we have already proved in the previous slides. If the hands of the clock less coincide in less than 65 by 5, 65 5 by 11 minutes then it means that the clock gains time. It means that the clock is fast. Instead of taking 65 minutes it is taking let's say just 63 minutes so it's very quick. And if the hands of a clock coincide in more than 65 5 by 11 minutes then the clock loses time it means that it is a slow clock. If a watch indicates 920 when the correct time is 910 it is said to be 10 minutes too fast. If a watch indicates 9 when the correct time actually is 910 it is said to be 10 minutes too slow. This is just to tell you a terminology so that you come to know what do you mean when you say a clock is too fast or a clock is too slow or you are given something like the hands of a clock coincide in 63 minutes. So is it too fast or is it too slow? We will do a couple of questions on this when we do the practice questions. So let's move on to the sample questions. We have discussed 5 concepts. If you need to take time to revise these concepts, go back to the slides, just register them, note them in your copy so that you have find it easier to solve these sample questions. At what time between 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock will the hands of the clock be together? So I will solve this using both the methods. The first method we talked about was using the formula of speed, distance and time. So when the clock strikes 3 o'clock as in here the angle is 90 degrees and we want them to coincide. It means that the minute hand here has to cover this 90 degrees to meet this hour hand. So what is my distance here? 
distance to be covered by the minute hand is 90 degrees what is the relative speed the minute hand is lagging the hour hand and the relative speed is 11 by 2 degrees per minute so what would be the time it would be distance by the relative speed which is nothing but 90 degrees divided by 11 into 2 or 180 degrees 11 by 2 is degrees per minute so this degrees and degrees will cancel out here so it would be 180 by 11 minutes okay so you can solve this this will come out to be this comes out to be 16 4 by 11 minutes past 3 which is the first option so this was the first method of solving the second method is simply by using the formula I have theta is equal to 11 by 2 m minus 30 h what is the theta that I want I want it to be 0 degrees 0 is equal to 11 by 2 I want to find out the num the minutes after after how many hours after 3 hours so I have 30 into 3 here so this gives me plus minus 0 which is actually 0 is equal to 11 by 2 m minus 90 or 90 into 2 by 11 is equal to m which is nothing but 180 by 11 which we already got here so the answer remains same 16 4 by 11 minutes so any which ways which you form find comfortable with you can solve the question using that it's better if you remember this formula because you don't have to apply your mind and it's always easier to save your mind while solving an examination let's move on to the next question at what time between 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock will the hands of the clock be perpendicular to each other now in this case the first method we discussed the distance is equal to speed into time would be a little difficult but you can try for clarity on concept but here I'll solve using the formula straight away so theta is equal to 11 by 2 m minus 30 h I want to find out the minutes so theta is how much it's 90 degrees is equal to 11 by 2 m minus 30 into between 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock I always take the smaller number so I have 30 into 4 so I will have plus minus 90 is equal to 11 by 2 m minus 120 so I will remove this and put brackets here because I have already used plus minus sign here so two equations 90 plus 120 is equal to 11 by 2 m this gives me Two hundred and ten into two by eleven is equal to m, which is nothing but four hundred and twenty by eleven. And similarly, if I use minus ninety here, so minus ninety plus one twenty is equal to eleven by two m. This gives me thirty into two by eleven is equal to m, or 60 by 11 is equal to m so this gives me 5 5 by 11 minutes this part and when you solve this part you will get somewhere around 38 2 by 11 so what is my answer option here the answer option is both a and b pretty easy so let's move to the next question at what time between 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock will the hands of the clock point in opposite directions opposite direction means 
theta is how much? 180 degrees. So I have 180 is equal to 11 by 2 into m minus the smaller number here is 3 o'clock minus 30 into 3. So removing the absolute sign I have plus minus 180 degrees is equal to 11 by 2 m minus 90. 270 is equal to 11 by 2 m this is one answer and minus 180 plus 90 is equal to 11 by 2 m is the other answer this gives me minus 90 is equal to 11 by 2 m clearly m will come out to be a negative quantity here because it's negative sign so this is not possible so the hands of the clock will point in the opposite direction only once between 3 and 4 o'clock and that is why if you remember for 180 degrees we just had 11 times between 12 hours whereas for all other angles we had 22 times that is why because of this 11 times I will have just one minute time here whereas in the previous question if you remember when we had to find out 90 degrees I had two answers so this points out the difference 11 and 22 this 22 is when theta is anywhere between 180 and 0 so 90 is in between both of them so it had two answers but 180 occurs only 11 times in 12 hours so it will have only one answer so let's find that out this gives me 540 by 11 is equal to m so when you solve this out you will have something like 4 49 1 by 11 minutes past 3 o'clock so this is the right answer let's move to the next question at 720 what will be the angle between the hour hand and the minute hand so I have to find out theta is equal to 11 by 2 m minus 30 h I have plus no let's not remove the absolute sign right away I have 11 by 2 into 20 minus 30 into 7 so this gives me 110 minus 210 absolute sign this gives me minus 100 the absolute sign or 100 degrees so what is my answer it's simple 100 degrees so this formula is very important and very essential let's move on to the next question the minute hand of a clock overtakes the hour hand in 66 minutes in comparison to the usual time how much in a day does the clock gain or lose now as we know that a correct clock takes 65 5 by 11 minutes to coincide which is nothing but 720 by 11 minutes but this clock is taking 66 minutes so it is a slow clock so it loses time it does not gain time so how much time does it lose it loses 66 minus 720 by 11 this will give you 726 minus 720 by 11 so it loses 6 by 11 minutes every 66 minutes on this faulty clock it loses this much of time how much in a day does this clock gain or lose so first thing is it definitely loses it loses in 66 minutes it loses 6 by 11 minutes so in one minute it loses 6 by 11 multiplied by 1 by 66 and in 24 hours it will lose how much 6 by 11 into 1 by 66 into 24 into 60 because this 24 hours I am converting it into minutes by multiplying by this 60 
so this 6 and this goes 11 when you solve this you will get the answer as 11 109 by 121 minutes this will reduce to 1440 by 121 so this is the answer minutes when you solve it I hope this is clear now the basic funda we used here was I knew that a correct clock takes 65 5 by 11 minutes if you don't know this fact then you're stuck at this question so remember this let's move to the next question a watch which gains is 2 minutes slow at 2 p.m. on Tuesday and it is 2 minutes fast at 10 a.m. on the next day when did it show the correct time so let's take 2 p.m. Tuesday and I have 10 a.m. on Wednesday so how many hours have passed in this interval 20 hours so in 20 hours it went from being 2 minutes slow to 2 minutes fast so basically it gained 4 minutes in 20 hours ok so it gains 1 minute every 5 hours 20 divided by 4 5 hours to show it the correct to show the correct time it actually needed to gain only 2 minutes so it will gain 2 minutes in how many hours 2 into 5 10 hours so 10 hours after 2 pm on tuesday it showed the correct time so it showed the correct time at 12 am on wednesday remember 12 am is the next day so what is my answer not this 12 am tuesday the correct answer is 12 am on wednesday let's take up the next question a clock is set to show the correct time at 4 am what is the correct time if it gains 12 minutes a day and shows 4 30 pm day after tomorrow so let's say i have the first day here i have the second day here and i have the third day here so 4 am on this day I set it right then 4 a.m. on the second day and there is 4 a.m. on this third day and then it finally shows 4 30 p.m. here now between these two days between the, the day 1 and day 2 between this one day it will gain 12 minutes so I know for sure it has gained 12 minutes here again from day 2 to day 3 it will gain 12 minutes here so it's gain already 24 minutes here so it will show 424 on day 3 when it's actually 4 a.m. now from 4 in the morning till 4 in the evening let's leave this 30 for a while it has shown 12 hours it gains 12 minutes in 24 hours so in 12 hours it will gain how many minutes half of this 12 or 6 minutes so till 4 in the evening it has gained 12 this 12 this and another 6 for the half day it has gained 30 minutes so actually at 4 in the evening it will show what time 4 which is the correct time plus the time it has gained 4 30 pm which is the time in the question here so what is the correct time the correct time is 4 pm you just need to it's a logical reasoning question not really involving clocks but more of a common sense question so the answer is 4 pm let's move to another question two clocks so show the same time at 10 am on a particular day one clocks clock gains two minutes in an hour while the other loses two minutes in an hour by how many minutes do the two clocks differ at 2 p.m. on the same day so from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. I have how many hours 4 hours and each hour one loses 2 minutes and the other one gains 2 minutes so in each hour the gap is of 4 minutes 
so in 4 hours how much gap would be there 4 multiplied by 4 or a gap of 16 minutes so by how many minutes do the two clocks differ on the same day the answer is 16 let's move on to the last question if the time in the clock shows 7 hours and 35 minutes then what time will it show in the mirror so I have the actual time 735 plus I will have the mirror image time this is equal to sorry not 12 this will equal to 12 11 60 or 12 0 and 0 but why do we not write 12 0 and 0 because what people actually do is they cancel out this as 11 and make this 10 whereas this has to be not 100 this is 60 that is why we write here 11 60 so what is the mirror image time it is 11 60 minus 7 35 this gives me 25 minutes and 11 minus 7 is 4 so the correct answer is 4 hours and 25 minutes which is the B part I hope you've enjoyed the lecture and clocks is no longer difficult for you thank you and practice more questions on clocks and do visit the website edusati.com your partner in education thank you